Hey guys, this is Post Commentary Royal before the video starts. I just wanted to apologize for episode one. I lost a bunch of footage and I tried to recreate it on a new game file as much as I can. So that's why there will be inconsistencies between episode one and two on there. However, I do end off in the same spot and I do get the same two Pokemon. So I hope you guys really got the gist of what happened in episode one. And without further ado, let's go to episode two. What's going on everybody, Royal Rep is here, and welcome back to the Fire Red Randomizer Nuzlocke. In the last episode, we got our starter, Berry the Swampert, here, a nice water ground type. There's some good movesets to start, and a great base stat total for this early in the game. And we also got Feast the Lickitung, which will probably struggle a bit more, considering it only has one move, and it's a, you know, 25 power ghost type attack. But, as we slowly walk away to the Viridian Pokemon Center, let me allow you guys to know that, um, yeah. I kind of suck at Pokemon, so don't expect this to be like a smooth run with, you know, no deaths or anything. There's probably going to be a lot of bro moments considering the fact that I'm not the world's, you know, brightest mind when it comes to things like this, and I'm overall kind of a dummy. But as I speed through this, because I can't bear to make you guys watch such horribly slow gameplay, we're going to head our way up through Viridian City, and we're going to come across this evil old man that I'm going to spare you from having to deal with. We can head up north over here to Route 2, meaning that it is time for us to get a new encounter. Now, we'll see what it can be. As we get a Pilo Swine, that's interesting. We'll mud slap it a bit because it's not going to take much damage from that. And I'm going to throw a few Pokeballs at it. If I can catch it, that would be nice. And we do on the last Pokeball. Gotcha. Pilo Swine was caught. I'm going to name you Potato, because you're brown. Sadly, this is not Generation 4, so we cannot get a Mamo Swine, but it'll have to do. Anyways, guys, I'll meet you back right here in a second. All right, so here we are back over at the uh, Viridian Forest entrance, so let's head in, and I've got to buy Pokeballs. I'll meet you back in a second. And here we are with our first encounter of the Viridian Forest, the Dawn Fan, another ground type, which would make it our third found so far. But hey, I mean, I'll add it to the collection. Oops, potion, that's not so ball. I'll add it to the collection nonetheless. And I'll name you. Uh. Apple. Because why not? Alright, well, we haven't really done much so far. Let's see what items that they have the yellow shard. And the protein. Okay, not bad. Uh, the walking speed. Why do they not give running shoes to you? On a silver powder. Not bad. I believe items are shuffled in this. So they're still all items you could normally find in the game. But uh, they're not going to be in the correct order. Like for example, I could find Ultra Balls early in the game. And I could find Potions really late in the game. Anyways, here's Bug Catcher Rick. He's going to send out a Silcoon. At least it's still a bug type. And we're going to send out our Berry. For a Water Gun, taking him out. And a Cyndaquil. Another Water Gun will take that out easily. And we beat Bug Catcher Rick. Alright, let's head forward. For another bug catcher. Okay, if you're a Pokemon trainer, Wobbuffet. That is extremely dangerous for a Nuzlocke challenge. You can see like how much damage that did. Fur it. And potato here. Shoot, for the powder snow. We gotta be careful. We got our left hitter goes to level 6. We got an EV. It's powder snow. And we're already taking big damage. That is not good this early in the run. We're gonna kill Potato. A couple more Powder Snows, and Potato survives with a 5 health. I'm going back to the Pokemon Center. I'll meet you guys right back here. Alright guys, that was a close one as we almost lost Potato. But luckily, we didn't lose Potato. And we find a Star Piece instead. As we excruciatingly slowly walk through this forest. At least the music's not bad. I think it's the same music that you hear in caves. But I might be little, but I don't like it if you go easy on me. I'm going to be speeding up battles for the time being. I mean, I'm sure it might be annoying to some extent, but especially in these trainer battles, they don't really offer a whole lot of challenge, so I don't think you guys will mind me speeding through them. It's either that or cutting them out. So at the end of this place, oh no, we aren't. There's one little more area. All wild, that would have been interesting. I don't mind getting a Dawn fan. Did you know that Pokemon Evolve? Oh no, I had no idea. Thanks for letting me know. Better with level 15. Trying to learn Bide. That, that, that could be interesting. I'll learn it. Spinda. Stone Potato. For a couple... Ooh. 
Why are you taking such big damage? So by the berry, we can tank one of those and the water gun will knock it out. Now we have Golduck. I didn't need to do that. He didn't attack me at all. And that's Bug Catcher Charlie out of the way. Let me go in my bag. Why, 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 why did I do that? So I have one more potion. Oh my god. And I use the menu. Sorry, I'm not used to this controller. I'm going to heal up Potato. Actually, going to put up front. Zubat. I think I didn't catch one of those. I'm not sure they have a Pylo sign. And final trainer of the area. Hey, wait up. What's the hurry? Why the rush? He has a cloister. That's interesting. I did big damage. Uh, so you were going to mud slap. The water gun's doing more. Yeah, cloister has ridiculous DIP, but I think it has base 200 defense. And mud shot already. That's, that's, uh, that's much better than mud slap. Also better than bide. I'm going to get rid of bide. That was like a one minute experiment. But yeah. Well, if Barry was a mud kit, we'd have a marsh stomp, but he's already a swampert, so what does it matter? As we had here, this will be a continuation of Route 2, so nothing new we can catch here. And we finally reach Pewter City. So here we are in Pewter City. Um, not really much to see or do here besides a gym battle, which is kind of important. But before we do that, I am definitely going to want to get some training done. So, excuse me while we enter a quick training montage. Alright guys, we got a little bit of training done as you probably saw in the montage. We got Potato and Apple both to level 12. Feast is probably just going to be here to be a sacrifice, honestly. I don't really plan to use a lick of tongue. But our ground trio, 12, 16, and 12. As we head into the Pewter City Gym, let's see what we're going to be up against here as we run into our first trainer. Turns out a Cyndaquil should be easy work for our Dawn fan. And a Grovile, this is actually not good. Powder Snow. Gets the job done. Good thing we have an ice type. And I'm going to go to the center and I'll meet you guys right back at Brock. Alright guys, here we are. First gym leader. Apple, berry, potato. Our squad of three. He's ready to go up against Brock. So you're Brock. So you're here. Sorry. I'm Brock. Pewter, uh, Pewter City's gym leader. Oh my god. My rock hard willpower is evident even in my Pokemon. My Pokemon are all rock hard and have true great determination. That's right. My Pokemon are all the rock type. Foo ha you're gonna challenge me knowing that you'll lose? That's the trainer's honor that compels you to challenge me. Fine then, show me your best, and here we are. As our first gym battle of the Nuzlocke versus Brock begins. He goes for a Machop. Not bad. Something we should be able to handle as we send out Apple. Who's gonna lead up, of course, with a horn attack. Do about a quarter. Kill over focus energy, which could be dangerous. But he goes for it again. So, and again, after that low kick. I did a bit, but we outspeed and took out the Machop with another horn attack. Down it goes, and Apple goes to level 13. 
as Illumise is up next. Not the most uh, dangerous thing in the world. As we're going to switch over to Potato. We get level 14. Our attack's going to be lower in two stages, but... We're using a special attack anyways. It didn't do anything. So, um... Is use Tackle, and we're talking trash. Is Charm lower special attack too? It very well might. Louise is also not bug flying, it's also pure bug. I'm actually kind of stupid. I thought it was bug flying, but um, it's pure bug, which makes no sense. It literally has wings, but Brock elects him not to heal, and Potato finishes off the Illumise, earning us our first unique Indo Gym badges. It's a little bit of level 13 in the process. Player Reader Leader Brock, I took you for granted and so I lost. As proof of your victory, I confer on you this. The official Pokemon League Boulder Badge. And I received the Boulder Badge from Brock. We're gonna speed this up a bit. And he gives us TM39, which I believe is Rock Doom. TMs are not multi-use, so it's not like it really matters in this. And yeah, I'm gonna go heal real quick and I'll meet you guys right outside the center. Alright guys, now that we're back, we can head out uh, east of Pewter City, and we have a wonderful surprise waiting for us right before I end the episode. This man with glasses right here is my savior. Oh, Anthony, I'm glad I caught up to you. I'm Professor Oak's aide. I'm gonna have to deliver this, so here you go. Yeah, we got the running shoes. Finally. Press we button to run. We'll speed through that, whatever. Finally, we can actually move at a somewhat decent pace. And on that note, I'm going to end this episode off. We earned our first gym badge, the Boulder Badge, the first of the eight Kanto gym badges. And that's enough for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.